So after some massive computer PC drama, we're back, we're good to go. You won't notice a difference, but if you follow me on Twitter, at CulturedF, then, yeah, you'll know that there was some drama, and I thought everything to do with Football Manager, Provo, and my channel had disappeared. But leave a like, because we're still going, the PC is fixed for now, and let's crack on. Roll the intro. <laughs> Welcome back to the NK Maribor Save. It's a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. And I say that a lot, but it is a pleasure to bring this video to you because, like I said in the intro, there were huge PC problems that we had. And my PC just turned off, wouldn't turn back on. I had to get in there, tinker around with the motherboard, and I fixed it in the short term, I think. I think it's still going to be a bit of a long-term issue, but for now, we're here. We've got the cup final against Bravo, and uh, yeah, then it's a quick end-of-season review, really. And I've tactically placed my camera screen in front of the budget so that you can't see what we've got to spend next year. I can see what we've got to spend next year. We'll touch on that later, but if you have been enjoying the series as I get the hiccups. Please do leave a like, a subscribe if you're new, and uh, there's plenty more content coming in your direction for Foot Manager, Pez, Become a Legend, maybe some other sports games, a few streams are happening. I will be putting a community post out about the new stream schedule. Apologies to those in the UK, probably not going to suit you very well, but Singapore time and all that doesn't make uh, it does make a huge difference to be honest and that's why it's happening anyway that's enough of that nonsense let's get into the game so looking at the schedule then as we move over to the other side of the screen there you can see it's been um a pretty phenomenal to be honest the 4-3 loss to barcelona which was absolutely ridiculously incredible in the last episode spoilers if you didn't see it uh we beat Triglav 5-0, we beat Alumji 3-0, we beat Mura 6-1, we beat Radimir 2-0, we beat Alumji 3-1, we beat Domzale 2-0, we beat Tabs on Sunza 3-0, we beat Sellers 3-0, we built Drew of Domzali back-to-back 2-0-0s, which is a bit disappointing. Um, beat Bravo 4-0, play Bravo now in the cup, and uh, then we'll just do this one offline and come back for the end of season review. But yeah, since playing Barcelona, um, not lost, conceded 2, and we've just beaten the team we're playing in the cup final 4-0 playing a pretty rotated team so I'm, I'm i'm pretty confident yeah i'm pretty confident going into this one i think we should be good i think we should be fine so i'll go in pick the team and then we will be back to go through uh to go through what's going to happen Interesting. still sticking with the four two three one okay so we're going full strength this is the cut final i want to put a marker down uh, the only difference is that svetlin comes in on the left instead of pozek vankas because he is suspended for this one barisic gets the nod up front we need to have a chat about Barisic. Um, potentially, we could buy him for, I think it's 13 million and then 18 million in total. It's something like that. We had a, an agreement. We came to a contract agreement and everything, and I withdrew because I wasn't too sure. He's very, very good, and he's going to be very, very good at our level for quite some time. But the worry I've got is that we're going to buy him and then get quite a lot of money and a big reputation boost going into next season. And I think we'll be able to buy potentially better. Apologies if my camera just sort of came in and out there. But uh, it will do that occasionally while the software is just, you know, updating. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, this is how we're going to line up. Let me know what you think we should do about Barisic. Should we just pay all the money in the world to bring him in? Potentially we should. I don't know. Let me know. Uh, Karius in goal. Matos, Stojanovic, Salatel, Prakalo, and and Elsnik. Musiowski, Utara, Svetlin and Barisic is leading the line. So let's get into the game and we'll be back for kickoff. So here we are then. It's on um, SITV, as you would imagine. Uh, yeah, that's our team, 4 2 3 on. They must be absolutely crapping themselves because we've just beaten them 4 0. They're playing pretty much the same team. Kramerich used to be an MK Maribor player, and they've got a Matko themselves at right back. Let's watch, let's, let's, let's watch us walk out. I mean, we're led by me in my wonderful purple suit, which is, if my wife would let me, I would buy one of those straight away, definitely. Uh, so three minutes in, first highlight, Matos picks it up and cuts it back towards Elsnick into Brahima. Out to Bracalo. Bracalo goes around his man. I don't think he's scored this season for us, Bracalo. Brahima into Bracalo. Oh, he's at the post. He still hasn't, but Barisic puts the rebound in. His 28th goal of the season. And this is what makes part of... Although you get good 
in Slovenia quite quickly as a team and you're obviously dominating the league. The step up is when you play in the Champions League and Barisic has done it against Barcelona and so, oh, I mean, that wasn't a very good finish, was it? He's literally kicked it against someone and it's gone in. Um, but yeah, you do get this sort of, the stats in the league really sort of blind you in thinking they're very, very good. I mean, he's got 28 goals this season. And he started, didn't even start the season as our starting striker. It was LZ90 that started it up front. So you do have to be a bit wary about the stats from the league. But there's, I guess there's nothing else to really base it on. It can very much tell you who's rubbish and not going to do well in the Champions League because they're not performing well enough in the league. I'd say everybody we want to keep should be getting like a 7 or above in the league because the teams are so rubbish that we play against. Uh, Musilowski, I made a bid for him as well. Liverpool wanted 126 million, so I, I I politely refused. Throw in then Matos right back into Brahima. Nguyen, Elsnick, Nguyen, Elsnick, Nguyen. Good ball to Matos. Ball in and it's offside. Oh, disappointment. Free uh, corner. Sorry, right on the stroke of half time. Stanovic has hit the bar. It's going to go uh, into the cup final half-time stage 1-0 up. I mean, we've been absolutely bossing it, and we there. One chance in the beginning, and since then, not too much has happened. I'm going to say... What am I going to say? Let's point the finger and say... Uh, go and show everyone your born winners. I think that's a good thing to say. Let's go for that. We'll probably bring on Matt Coe at right wing for some, at some point. And Gleason isn't having a good game. I wonder if he doesn't like... Does he not like... Big games? No, nothing to say there. Nothing nothing around about big games. Okay, fair enough. I was saying, if he doesn't like big games, I'd probably sell him to one of the big teams that want him, but maybe he's just not enjoying it in the cup final today. Maybe you can't be asked. To be honest, we've just beaten them 4-0. I probably wouldn't be that fussed. So on the hour mark, then, we'll make some subs, and Gleason will come off. We'll bring on... Who do we want to bring on in there? I prefer to actually move... Let's bring... We'll bring Brest on there. Musilowski will come off a Matko as well. And then we're going to uh, move Svetlin into the Mazala role. Brest can go out on the left. He's looking like a good little youngster. Hopefully he'll get a bit more game time next year. And Gleason in. Svetlin with the header. I mean, if that was Brest, he would have scored. And he's got a funny name because it's Brest. So, yeah, you know, lady bits. Uh, throw in Bracalo. It's terrible. Matko gets it away. Elsnick puts it in. Oh, it nearly found its way to Matko. Svetlin will pick this up. Just coming on. Matos. Matos into the space for Barisic. And Vekic is out well for Bravo. Johnny Bravo. That's not a good kick, is it? He's giving it straight back to the guy. That... It's like they're playing a little bit of one-two. Barisic past the post. Not a very good finish at all. And, uh, well, it carries on. Vekic goes along with this one. Bracalo can bring that down towards Zalato. Up towards Brahima. Vukasevic nods it into the path of Svetlin. Matko. Matko on the outside to Matos. Matos has got to run at the defence here and he gets past his man and there Brocalo brings him down. That will be a yellow card. He went in two-footed. It's a red card. Get him off. Game over. From the free kick then, Brahima swings it in and it's headed away. Stojanovic, our big centre-back, will get there. Is he going to whip in a cross? No, he's going to do the sensible option and give it to someone who's actually a more technically able footballer than he is. Elznik. Into Brahima, back to Elznik, looking for Barisic again, cleared away though. And uh, Zalatel holds on to the ball for the team in purple, which is us, if you weren't sure. Um, Bracalo, Elsnick, Svetlin, Matko, Barisic. Oh, we've made them look like a bunch of plums, haven't we? What a goal that is. 29, can he hit 30 for the season? Oh, you wouldn't bet against it with 20 minutes to go against 10 men. He is uh, playing very, very well. Bracalo, little back heel to Elsnick. Elsnick across to Svetlin. Svetlin into Matko. Wonderful ball found the corner. And, uh, well, Barisic is... He's making a good impression in why we should buy him, to be honest. So, Karius plays it into Svetlin. A lovely little ball up there. Svetlin out to Marco Brest, the youngster who's come on the left wing. Backer goes it cross. Elsnick flicks it on. Matko! Oh, what a volley! What a... Uh, he actually missed. He must have skimmed the top of the bar. I thought it was a save at first, but it wasn't. It's just gone... Over the bar. Five minutes to go. It doesn't look like Barisic is going to get his hat trick. We are going to just drop Barisic into the attacking midfield role. And we're going to bring on LZ90 for the final part of the final. Give him a little round of applause from the fans as he comes on. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be here next year. But um, I just thought it would be nice to bring LZ90 on. Who has sort of lost his place because of Barisic's form. Which is testament to Barisic. And one of the reasons I was quite keen to potentially bring him in. Because... 
He's young, would probably make profit, and he is keeping the love of my life, LZ90, out of the team. So, as a Luca foot someone through, it's going to fall to Brest, and I said Marco Brest likes a goal. He's a good upcoming youngster. His seventh goal of the season. Marco Brest is uh, well, doing very, very well. Elsnick here turned, laid it into Barisic in the attacking midfield role. Zahovic, round the corner it went into Svetlin. He laid it off to Brest and left-footed, just snuck it in at the near post. It's a lovely finish. 3-0 up in the cup final. We're going to get another little award ceremony, aren't we? It was obviously a very close offside call. It was not close at all. Don't show me that. It was about two yards on. Kramerich against his old clubs had a shocker. A 5.9. That is, that is dreadful. That is absolutely dreadful. So there we go then. The game is over. The final is done. It's a League Cup double for us. The Champions League quarterfinal, uh, quarterfinals, what am I about? Champions League first knockout round as well. I wish it was the quarterfinals. But it felt like it against Barcelona. Blimey hell. We got all that way. But there we go. I'm going to hand over the trophy to uh, whoever the captain was on the day. I literally have no idea. And uh, he's, he's, hey, there he is. Carrius celebrates yet again winning another trophy. Who would have thought it, hey, Loris Carius being a double League and Cup winner. And, uh, yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. So we will outstretch the arms. We will say congratulations. And the boys can be very, very happy. Um, Please for everybody. It was a complete performance in every regard. And the lines are still on the pitch for offside as well. That's how late into the game that goal came. And a very good win. The double is done. The double is done. So we've got lots of people that have been scouted. Cavani. Um... Yeah, not probably not on our radar anymore. Under 19s win the Youth Cup again, uh, four nil. Tanel Milandre, two appearances, three goals. He was on. He, he got a couple of senior call ups actually, and uh, did pretty well. Two assists, two goals in seven. I think we may have picked up a little bit of a bargain there on a free transfer. The Estonian Hagen as well, uh, the winger from Norway. We picked him up on a free. He played three times for the senior team this year. So we are bringing through. The youngsters, we are doing it. As uh, We win the double, which is wonderful. We get a little bit of money for the Youth Cup final. We get 62-ish, 63-ish grand for that as well. Medals are dished out for anybody that wants one. And uh, we've won it consecutive seasons. We'll probably see that quite a lot during this save. Um, yeah, the board are pleased. Lovely. Barisic on form of two goals. We'll sweet talk him again and just say he's absolutely brilliant. And uh, we're going to send the assistant to that because we won it. Uh, everyone got paid 35 grand. So we actually made a profit from winning the cup. Excellent. 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 Um, top goal scorer, Vito Matejlovic, who doesn't look very good. Uh, top assister, Andrei Loptic, again, doesn't look very good. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Runners up, bravo. Biggest overshoes at NK Zerici. Zerici, look at that for a stadium. Oh, it's a beaut. It's an absolute beaut. And at the best match was a 4-1 win where Zagra de Savia lost 4-1 to whoever the hell they are. Smart, no. That's not a, that's not an upset, is it? They're in the second division. They're in the third division. Uh, Dino Zagra receive um, 1.5k because the loan deal for Barisic meant they got that. And it still means we're in profit, which is fine. We've got one more bit of news, apparently. Oh. Okay, that was all the way down there. I must have missed it. But there we go. Right, I'm going to play this final game um, away from the camera and we'll be back for the end of season review. We'll see you then. So here we are then, the end of season review. We won the last game of the season 3-1, playing a completely rotated team, which was great. But uh, yeah, we won the league, we won the cup. The end of the 2023 season is among us. So let's see... We're going to try and go through this and see if we can predict what ratings. Um, now, obviously, we've signed quite a lot of youngsters that are probably never really ever going to be played. So we'll start at the bottom and then go up because I think the bigger names, actually, they're not, are they? It's all sort of jitted around. Okay, so Musilowski, uh, 29 appearances, four as a substitute, 17 goals, eight assists. That's got to be an A, hasn't it? It's got to be an A rating. A B minus. 7.39, bloody hell. Uh, Charles on loan played one game, no goals, no assists. I'm going to say uh, C. I think if they've given a B minus to him, C, maybe C minus. An A minus? <laughs> what is going on? How has he been given an A minus? I guess it's the value of the of the deal or something. Okay, Palo I mean, again, he was a free, so an A. Yeah, an A minus, unbelievable. Right, he's got to be an A plus. Got to be an A plus. 
A plus. They like to bring in a loan. The loan fee and the wage company represent great value for money. Excellent. Uh, Timmy Elsnick, it's an interesting one. Played a lot of times. Four goals, 11 assists. He had a good season, to be honest. I'm going to go B minus. It's a B. Okay, it's a B. Uh, pleased with the part exchange deal that resulted in Timmy Elsnick joining the club. Lovely stuff. Renato Matos, it's got to be an A plus. Got to be an A plus. Absolutely superb. He's got the little star next to his name, which is the signing of the season, yet only got a B plus. Uh, we are pleased to see that the Minfi release calls are 1 million and be an excellent deal for the club should it ever be triggered. I think we can probably get that to be higher. According to he's valued at 950k. I feel like we need to up that because that is low and he is young and we want to keep him around for a few more seasons. Um, Lucas Bejka, yeah, again, I think pretty decent, to be honest. I'm, I'll say a, a B, a B, a flat B. It's a B minus. Excellent stuff. Um... Uh, player, please. Maybe do not have him play a transfer fee, even if his wages are on the high side. Minimum fee with a of one million. Again, he's got to be close to. Actually, yeah, he's okay. He's not actually that close to it. It's really annoying. It doesn't take you back to the page you're on. But anyway, we'll keep going. Uh, Talon Melander, I reckon an A because he looks like he's going to be very, very promising. Uh, a B plus. Okay, fair enough. Jakob Perelman, no idea. Uh, C. A C plus. Yeah. Okay. Rajanon Golan, I'm going to go D. A C minus. There we go. Uh, Hagen probably a C. Yeah, Flavio probably a C. Yeah, Rodriguez Rodrigal probably a C. He's on uh, gone back on loan to Red Bull Brazil, by the way. Uh, an A minus. Again, I, I tell you what, he has actually got quite good potential. It looks like. So yeah, I mean the oh for God's sake, if we can keep these Brazilians coming through and actually train them, so we've got things. I'm not gonna look at. Anyone that didn't really make an appearance, I feel like that was not really brilliant. Other than Vinicius Rangel, C. Okay, we might as well C, C, A, mi A minus. Again, I don't quite understand how those ratings are done. But anyway, the season's results then. Obviously, we won the league. We won the cup. We've had a fantastic season. Uh, losing one league game all season to Radomilj, who... Actually ended up finishing outside of the uh, the European places. As you can see, we got a place in the Champions League and no place in the Europa League. It's all gone to the Europa Conference. So, so um, yeah, it's a bit strange, that one. But uh, Bartol Barisic got 20 goals in the league, which was great. We had a 60% average attendance. And uh, the board of pleased the team. Won the Priva Liga Telecom league this season in the champions league we got knocked out in the first knock around by barcelona but we had a long route to the final uh, to the final we had a long route to our final against barcelona where we had some unbelievable results along the way incredibly knocking out shakhtar donetsk as well which was incredible we beat milan we uh, we beat sturmgrads we drew with milan and we've had what, an 8-3 aggregate thriller against Barcelona, scoring three goals away at the new Camp as well. Incredible season. Luka Zahovic actually ended the, uh, the the competition as our top goal scorer with 11, which was great. They wanted us to just get to this point to play Shakhtar. We smashed through that. We got an A-. minus. Incredible. Uh, and then winning it only got us a C+, plus, which is ridiculous. Uh, Barisic, top goal scorer again with 6 and uh, yeah, an undefeated run, as you would imagine. So 4-1-5-0-0-0-2-0-0-0-3-0 in the final. Moments to remember. The biggest win, an 8-0 win actually in the Champions League, which is always impressive. Uh, and that's when Zahovic decided to be brilliant and score five. Uh, match to remember, the 4-1 away win to Selge after getting Stunovic scoring and getting sent off in the same game. And the goal of the season was... Um, the was from Marco Brest. There you go. I said he was good. Uh, scored a curling effort from 24 yards, which curled past the goalkeeper. Finances wise, here we go. Drum roll, please. We're doing pretty well. Sponsorship has gone up ever so slightly by 300k. Uh, broadcast revenue went actually went down, which is strange. According that we were in the Champions League for longer. Corporate hospitality uh, went up. Competition prize money was huge because of the Champions League, and match day commercial and retail was went up because we had genuinely more games because of the Champions League stages we got to. Uh, merchandise 352k with 35,000 pounds being sold non domestically. So the shirt I bought with Zahovic 90 on the back was brilliant. I'm glad he's the biggest selling shirt. That makes me very happy inside. No new sponsorship deals this year, uh, no new deals at all this year, actually. And the reputation is. Was national, 
and still is national, but I think that's just not... Um, I, I feel like that hasn't changed because it's not the end of the European season yet. But uh, the most... Well, is this the... We rotate the team a fair amount. Our key players played a major role in how the season turned out. I mean, that sort of sums it up, doesn't it? That was the team. That was exactly the team. Carry, apart from those two the other way around. Um, Karius, Matos, Thurnovic, Salatel, Procalo. Solid back five for the league we're in and the Champions League. Elznik and Guisen, Otada. Great little triangle three in the middle. Misalowski on the right. Pozik Vankas on the left and Baratic up front. Mwah! Superb. Our custom fluid counter-attack formation working well. So the accolades, your hard work and effort paid off on the pitch and such a feat didn't go unrewarded at our end of season award ceremony. So um, the manager of the award, I don't think we won anything. I don't think. Um, player awards, so the club awards. Thurnovic got fans player of the season. He got young player of the season. Renato Matos was signing of the season. Marco Brett got goal of the season. Barisic was the club's top scorer with 20. Otara had 10 assists. Otara also had four player of the match awards. And Stojanovic ended the season with the highest average rating. In terms of the competitions, Slovenian First League Young Player of the Season went to Jean Nguyssen, which was great. And the First League top goalscorer was Lukas Zahovic yet again. Um, incredible. First League Player of the Season, Lukas Zahovic. Slovenian Player of the Year, Lukas Zahovic. Incredible. Record breakers then. Um, Lukas Zahovic got the most goals per for a single player in a game, which was five. Uh, Barisic scored four in a league match to get that record. Most clean sheets by a player was Karius with 30 in the league. Incredible stuff that. Stojanovic had the worst discipline. Ten yellow cards and two reds. And uh, our youngest goal scorer is now Tanel Milanda. Uh, 17 years and 232 days, which is absolutely incredible. And there you go. Maribor owe everything to a fantastic start to the season. That kick started their assault on the title. And the spell of football to start the season was making of Maribor. It really set them up for success. Absolutely brilliant season all round. And uh, yeah, very, very happy, to be honest. I think it's gone really, really well. It's all about the Champions League now. That's what we want to go and conquer um, and crack on with. So we're going to keep playing attacking, entertaining football. We're going to try and develop the youth uh, club's youth system as well. We'll stick with set pieces because they seem to be working for us. The, the board don't really seem to be moaning too much about that. Um, they want us to reach the playoff. Okay. Um, interesting. We're going to get no, a minimum two contracts work within the budget. That's fine. Uh, the improvement for training facilities will be completed pretty soon as well, which is good. Um, Dynamic-wise, everybody loves us. It's great end-of-season team meeting. We're going to win the league. We're going to win the league. Have a good break. I'm not going to accept anything less than winning it next time out. That's the sort of reaction. After a good season, I'll also be able to reach the latter stages, Champions League. Um, to reach Champions League competition proper, reach the knockout stages. I think we've got to sort of say proper. Yeah, I think that's the best we can do. I don't think... According that the board don't even want us to get there, that's fine. Once you return for your holidays, then we'll discuss promises. Everybody, great. Go and have a lovely, lovely holiday. Excellent. Uh, so season team report. Composure is really good. Goalkeepers don't come on their area. Blah, blah, blah. I'll look at all of this offline. See what we need to improve. The squad go on their end of season break. They're going to be back on the 26th of June. The cup final was won 4-1. Sorry, not 3-1. 4-1. And uh, Bejga is there as well. Now, 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 now. I teased you earlier on saying that I was in the way of our transfer amount that we've got going into the summer. That amount is... £20.3 million. Pounds. We've got loads of money. We have loads of money. We have £200,000 a week in the wage budget, which is incredible. So, in theory, there is a chance to go and bring in some big signings. Now, one of those that I'm interested, to, obviously, to bring in, um, there looks like a lot of people in our squad, but that's because I've been having the under-19s in there for a while, is... Barisic. I would love to bring him in on loan. If I go make off at this, was the deal that we were uh, that we agreed with Dynamo Zagreb actually it was 6 million up front it was 7 million over 6 instalments so yeah 1.16 million a year or every 6 months sorry after 50 games 2.5 million after 50 goals they get another 3 million and a uh, percentage of the profit from the next sale 30% if I can knock that off and knock this down I'm just the only thing I've got is that he's definitely going to play 50 games for us, so that's a given. He's probably going to score 50 goals pretty quickly, so that's a given. So it would cost 18 million, even though it's only six million now. It would cost us 18 million pounds, which is it's a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of money to pay for a 20-year-old 
oh, he's just he's so good he's got all the right attributes where you want him he's tall he's relatively quick he can jump he's got great anticipation he's off the ball's good i mean I, I think i might just do it the fact we've got so much like wages and money to play with i feel like just losing losing six million for this year is nothing really is nothing um we're going to offer them that. They've accepted it straight off, which probably means I'm paying a bit too much. Well, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to see if I can get them a bit cheaper later on in the uh, in the summer window. But really, there's not too much to uh, to talk about, really. I mean, in terms of strengthening, we're going to let the likes of um, Nine Golan go. We're going to clear out hopefully some of these people that we've sent out on loan that are just going to be nowhere near the first team anymore um for the Sarge is leaving we've got Zer, we've got ballo uh picabe potentially could make something of his career he's 20 years old vipotnik i just think he's not six goals in 17 when you look at the strikers that we've had and their goal scoring ratios i'm going to say he's not really near it so i'm probably going to offload him as well um ballo we bought in there's something there there's something for the potential but again i just feel like you can i'd rather farm him off to another slovenian team and increase their reputation and stuff and greason might go uh nigolan's gonna go we're not gonna renew his contract um elsnick will stay kilmanic he's the perpetual backup left back and i feel like with sturm who's older but a better left back and Bejko, who can play all the way across the back three, who's not brilliant, but all the way across the back three is very useful. I just feel like we don't really need it. But let's go and see what the scouts find. That is the rules that we have in the division. Um, Ziga Oberet, again, had a good season uh, in, in the Premier League. So maybe he gets a call up to the first team next year and we maybe look to move someone else on. Uh, there's a lot of players that are just on the cusp of, ugh, they could play. But when you've got a squad as just done as well as we have that season, they probably don't need to. We don't really need to strengthen them. So I think the younger guys, Mutavic is another one, or Muta, Mutavcic, Mutavcic. Again, 22 years old, came through our youth system. Does he just perpetually keep going out on loan? He has never played in the Premier League. It's always been to the second division. So there's a lot of a lot of things to think about this summer. So I'm going to take a bit of time. There won't be another episode. Um, what day is this coming out? This will come out on Thursday. Maybe Monday will be the next episode. Maybe I'll take the weekend to do the transfer window properly. See what we can do. Try and move people on. And try and really get out there and get our scouts searching all across the globe to try and find either the next superstar or a sort of older player that will take us to the next level and wants to move to Slovenia. It is tough to bring people in, but we will end it there. So thank you so much for watching. It's been great. I mean, this video only just about comes to you because the PC survived what could have been catastrophic and it really would have hurt like the content on the channel so do leave a like if you're happy that this video has come out leave me a comment to say that you're enjoying what's going on and what you think we should do in the summer but for now as league and cup double champions and getting to the knockout stages of the champions league somehow in a group with inter milan and dortmund what a season let me know what you think who is your player of the season who is your player of the season that's a good question let me know down below um thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate every little bit of support we get but for now i'm out Cheers.